My name is uh, Jaap Vallaar, I'm the Editor-in-Chief of Rheumatology and I would like to welcome Professor Jacques Morel from Montpellier University um, who was the uh, lead author of a recent paper in rheumatology on serious infections in RA patients treated with tocilizumab. Um, so Jacques, tell us what, um, what was this uh, study about? Thank you uh, Jaap for uh, your invitation. So our uh, REGAT registry is a registry of patients treated with tirizumab and uh, we have included 1,500 uh, uh, patients mm. in this uh, registry. So the main goal of this uh, observational study is uh, to uh, evaluate the adverse events mm -hmm. with the tocilizumab and especially serious infections. Right. And uh, the uh, incidence uh, rate of serious infections mm -hmm. in our registry is uh, 4.7 mm -hmm. uh, for 100 patients years. Mm -hmm. So it's a, um, a rate observed in the clinical studies mm -hmm. uh, and uh, also in uh, another observational study, a German observational study, it's uh, about the, the same uh, rate. Mm -hmm. Um, the original uh, findings of our uh, study uh, is uh, especially the predictive factors of serious infections. Right. Indeed, uh, we identified um, some uh, uh, factors unusual, mm -hmm. uh, like uh, ACPA uh, negative patients, mm -hmm. uh, like uh, le flunamide association, and also uh, a high absolute number a count of neutrophils above a 5 uh, giga per liter mm -hmm. uh, that was uh, associated with uh, these uh, serious infections. Right, right. So it's in line with clinical trial data, uh, in, right? And, and is that because you were already warned about the possible possibility of serious adverse events, so maybe doctors involved in the registry were already taking precautions is that, is that an explanation why the rate is not... I mean, you would expect maybe a higher rate because you had... Uh, I, I noticed when reading the paper, um, you know, your age limit was up to 80. Yeah. So you had uh, a decent number of elderly patients. Indeed, I, we expected uh, a higher rate of infections. Maybe uh, you're right, the uh, physicians and are now aware of mm -hmm. uh, the risk of serious yeah. infections, especially with uh, uh, the availability of uh, other uh, biodemons, and um, it could explain this uh, lower rate as expected. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But indeed, it's in the range uh, that was observed in the uh, clinical uh, studies, yeah. and uh, at this meeting, it's uh, the incidence you rate mean at the ACR. At the ACR, yes, yes, yes. Uh, yes. At the ACR, it's uh, uh, 4.2, so it's uh, yeah, yeah, in, yeah. In, in, in within the the range. Yeah. yeah. So, in terms of type of, of serious infections, did you notice any unusual infections in your cohort, or was that again the, the type of infections that uh, that are seen in clinical trials? Again, that uh, there is no unusual. Uh, type of infections. Yeah, right. It's a uh, lung, uh, especially uh, mm -hmm. the site of the infection. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I'm, I'm sure the vaccination programs in France are pretty <laughs> tight. So um, were your patients properly vaccinated before they were put on biologicals? Well, in this registry we did not collect uh, the data, but we have some uh, informations of the uh, vaccination coverage yeah. in, in our country and in fact I think it's like in other uh, countries mm -hmm. and uh, it's uh, still we, we have still some work to do yeah. uh, to mm -hmm. increase mm -hmm. uh, the coverage because it's uh, quite uh, good for un uh, pneumococcal vaccination mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. it's about uh, uh, Seventy percent of the patients who are uh, covered, mm -hmm. uh, but the, for the flu, it's more, it's less. It's uh, mm -hmm. right. fifty to sixty percent. Right, right. Yeah. Okay. 
So, um, well, from this I conclude that um, you know uh, we, we know that tocilizumab in, in has a risk or carries a risk of infections, but uh, even in an observational study, the signal is not uh, you know worrisome when compared to the clinical trials. Would you would you agree with that? You're right, yeah. and it's uh, even in our registry it's uh, real life so yeah, the patients were right. not selected yes and uh, we yeah. also found uh, like in the clinical studies um, similar rates so yeah. that's uh, yeah. some our uh, very uh, um, how can i say <laughs> mm. uh, Reassuring. Uh, yeah, reassuring. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. So, uh, and, and last, um, lastly, I, I guess that your, your f the factors you found as predictors, you know, that needs to be confirmed, right, in, in further studies. Yeah. Because that, that we don't really understand yet. Yes, for the leflunomide, it was uh, observed in another study. So okay. it's a second yeah. study uh, yeah. that uh, showed this uh, association. Uh, uh, between uh, leflunomide and uh, the risk of the mm. of serious infections, uh, for the uh, high uh, nat neutrophil counts, mm. indeed it needs to be uh, confirmed. But I think it's uh, related to the disease activity uh, because mm. this is a uh, uh, data collected at baseline, yeah. and it could reflect the disease mm. of the activity. Yeah. And we yeah. know that patients with high disease activity mm. are more at risk yeah. of uh, infection. Yeah. Yeah. And for the ACPA, it's the first time, so also, yeah, yeah so you, we have yeah, to, yeah. Uh, yeah. to confirm this uh, yeah. observation. Yeah. observation. Yeah. All right, well, uh, very interesting paper. Um, again, I encourage all the uh, um, readers to, uh, of the journal to, to read this paper thoroughly. With lots of clinical implications, and I'd like um, Jacques to uh, thank you and um, See you later, probably. Thank you, yep. All right, bye. <laughs>